in sin what he did was that he resurrected my soul and my soul cries out on this morning hallelujah if you love him won't you just shout hallelujah I don't know about you but I'm so thankful that he saved me I'm so thankful that he redeemed my life at a high cross cost I don't know about you but I believe the word that says he hung high and he bowed his down low they stretched him on a cross so that I could live a victorious life, not a life of torment, not a life of strife, but so that I could have indescribable joy. Why don't you just shout hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I came to praise his holy name on today. I don't know what he brought you through, but I know he's brought you a mighty long way. Amen. Every time I think about the goodness of the Lord, I just shout, holy, 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 Lord God almighty, God, he's so good and he's gracious. He brought us another seven days. When other people deceived us, they deceitfully used us, when they twisted our words, when the doctor came in with a bad report, God said, I got you. He said, don't look to the left. He said, don't look to the right, but be mighty and strong and courageous. And someone needs to hear that on this morning because the ups and downs of life will get us distracted, kind of discourage us. But we must focus on our good, good father because he said he was never going to leave us. He was never, ever going to forsake us. And so I thank him for our children today. I'm looking at Zoe. I'm thankful for her future in dance. I'm thankful for Phoenix and her career. I'm thankful for the evidence of Geraldine Taylor. She's a miracle, a sign, and a wonder. I am believing God for victory on this morning. For the Smith and Kutcherman families, what we believe is that delay, it is never denial. I am celebrating Trinity on this morning. I'm celebrating Vanity on this morning. I'm celebrating Earlene and Daphne on this morning. I'm celebrating all the mothers and the fathers who have hidden a word inside of their heart on this morning. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of men of those what God has called for us. Lord God, I thank you. I just thank you and I worship you. I thank you for Brother Wayne Kelly on this morning. I thank you for his daughter. I thank you for the seeds that he planted inside of her. I'm thankful for Jasmine Chestnut on this morning. I'm just so thankful for Miss Nisi on this morning. We have the evidence of his grace and his mercy. Yes. We have the evidence. I thank you for Sister Shirley and Sister Gwen on this morning. Miracles miracles, signs, and wonders. I thank you for the spiritual gifts that he's imparted to each and every one of us, that we ought not stand alone, but we ought to fellowship one with another, that we are a blessing to the body of Christ. We are casting out demons and devils. We are walking in authority that he given us by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. And so when our heads are bowed down, he said, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory, he shall come in. And so we're thankful this morning that he's already saturated the atmosphere. He's already prepared a place for our worship. And we say and we believe that when the praises go up, the blessings they absolutely shall come down. He is a man of his word. And his word, it never returns void. Amen. Let us join together with our morning doxology. Praise God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. all creatures here below. Praise him 
above, ye heavenly host. as we celebrate our Lord and Savior with our hymn of praise because he lives because he lives we can face tomorrow because he lives all our fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth living just because he lives God sent his son they called him Jesus To love, heal, and forgive. He bled and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there. To prove my Savior lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. And life is worth the living Just because he lives How sweet to hold our newborn baby the pride and joy he gives but greater still the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days He lives. Because he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. is worth the living. And 
and then one day I'll cross that river. I'll fight life's final war with pain. And then his death gives way to victory. I'll see the lights of glory. And I'll know he reigns. Because, because, because. Face tomorrow. Because he lives. All fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. It's worth the living just because. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Please remain standing as we declare our Apostles' Creed. Shall we share together? I believe in God, the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. While you continue to rest on your feet, we will have the reading of God's word by Deacon in Training Janice Mills. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. What an awesome day. Our pastor, 41st anniversary, preaching anniversary. It's a lot, of t a, lot, a lot of time to be preaching, and we're thankful. Yes, we are blessed. I will be reading from the New International Version, Romans 10, verses 14 through 15. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. And the word of the Lord is already blessed. Amen. And we'll have Deacon Geraldine Taylor come and bless us with our invocation prayer. Let's give Pastor a uh, hand clap of praise for 41 years of preaching. I've been under him for 32 years <laughs> since I was a teenager and his word has grown me and grew me and matured me and, and then just showed me things that I never thought I would see through his word and so we want to thank him. Um, amen. Let us pray. Almost wise and dear gracious God, it's once and again that we come to say thank you. 
Uh, first, we, we thank you for waking us up this morning because we know you didn't have to do it, so we're mighty glad that you did. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for our being. We thank you for being present this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we come in here this morning to meet you, and so we invite your presence this morning, Lord God. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you would just have your way in this service and have it to be what you would want it to be. Allow your Holy Spirit to reign and rule in this place, Lord God. Dear Heavenly Father, we come this morning to celebrate our past in this 41st preaching anniversary, Lord God. We know that he has meant so much to many, 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 many of us, Lord God. And so allow us to take in to keep what he has taught us through his preach word, through his Bible study, just him being present. And so we just want to say we thank you for him. We know there has been, been, been many valleys, Lord God. But as he preached before that there's light at the end of the tunnel, there's a word in his heart and mind and his soul. And so we thank him, um, Lord, this morning. Even right now, we ask that you would just bless the manservant that's going to come forth, that's going to break forth the word this morning. May it meet our needs, Lord God. We ask that you would just, the word touch every person that's present here today and every person that's online watching. And so again, we thank you, Lord. We thank you. And we give your name the highest praise. Hallelujah. And we again thank you for our pastor, Lord God. We thank you for him, Lord God. We thank you for him being the shepherd of this uh, flock, Lord God. So continue to use him and groom him. Continue to heal his body, and we claim complete healing in the name of Jesus. And so again, we thank you, and we bless your name, and my soul says amen. Good morning. Good morning, Bethany. And I'm going to echo what has already been said, giving our pastor all honor and many more blessings on his 41st preach, preaching anniversary on this morning. We are so blessed to have him all the years, his dedication to being leading this shepherd, this lit branch of Zion. If we have any first time visitors, would you please stand? Any first time visitors? Maybe you're visiting us first time on this occasion, virtually. That is the first time visitors. God bless you. Let's give them a welcome, these two young people. We're glad you chose to worship with us on this morning. On behalf of our pastor, Reverend Dr. Thurm M. James Sr., our executive pastor, all of our Bethany family, we're glad that you chose to join this come this way on this morning. We just sit back, enjoy our service. And if you are looking for a home church, we would have you join the Bethany family. But if you have not taken that first important step and accepted Jesus Christ into your life, you may, you'll have the opportunity to do so later in our service. God bless you. Thank you. We thank you for joining us. We are so happy to see you on today. It's giving time. It is now time for our missionaries to prepare to serve us and pass baskets. Won't you get a good gift in your hand? We have been called to be his hands and feet on the earth, and we have been blessed so that we can be a blessing to others. Let the strong bear the infirmities of the weak, and we do that financially at this time. And so as you prepare, you can... Give your offering by cash via PayPal or Givelify. You can always go to our website. And when you have secured a generous gift in your hand, we shall pray. 
Dear wise and eternal Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give. We thank you that you have poured into us financially so that we can be a blessing to someone else who may have a need. God, we thank you. We bless. We ask that you would bless the hands and the heart for giving purposes. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for participating in our worship of our Heavenly Father in the service of giving. We shall now have brief announcements. We do have our prayer calls, as you know, Monday through Friday. Please join them. The information will be on the screen. We have Wednesday in the Word. We have been having such an awesome time in Bible study. Yes, amen, amen. Listen, and you all can join because it's virtual. And so won't you join us on Facebook Live or on Zoom? This week's study is Lesson 8, Passing the Word on, Deuteronomy chapter 6, 1 through 9. Question packets are in, on the table in the foyer. And as uh, Trustee Emeritus Swinton, I believe that was her voice, she said, and it is also on the prayer call. So we can join Zoom by Facebook Live and yes, ma'am, on the prayer call. We have a night of prayer and praise. Prayer is essential, and Christ has called us to pray without ceasing. In this year of yes, please join us for our first night of prayer, and it is this Friday on March 22nd at 7 p.m. right here. We would love to have you here so that we can pray one for another. On the Friday, we will host the seven last sayings from the cross. That is March 29th. Please say yes to serving in all capacities, helping in our finance, ushering, singing, security, hospitality, media. We need you. And so please see the enclosed flyer. Sacrificial giving. Sacrificial day is Sunday, October 20th, but please don't delay to make your pledge this Sunday. All pledge sheets are to be submitted to chairpersons of trustees, Jeanette O'Halle and Sharon McBride. For Resurrection Sunday, we want you to get excited about Easter and with our Bethany Baptist Big Yes. On Sunday, March 31st at 9.30 a.m., the Youth Easter Program will occur. Immediately following is our Resurrection Worship. Easter Big Yes Sunday is a kickoff to sacrificial giving, and here is what we want to get accomplished. We desire, we are praying for 25 people to be saved and or join the church. Amen? Amen? We are praying that 25 people would generously give $500. We are praying that 20 people would generously give $250. We're praying that 15 people would generously give $125, and that would kick off our sacrificial ministry, and that would uh, grant us $19,370. $5. As you know, we have some tasks at hand. There are some goals that we are trying to get accomplished. And so won't you join us with our big yes. Amen? Amen. 
It is now time to be led further in worship as we celebrate our wonderful under shepherd, Reverend Dr. Thurman James Sr. We will have the occasion by Deacon Stephanie Thomas. Won't you stand on your feet and give him an applause. He has been so faithful. If he's poured into you, if he's done anything, prayed for you, counseled you, talked to you, talked you off the ledge, preached to your heart, won't you celebrate him at this time? Yes. I thank God for him because he helped me. I don't know about y'all. I don't know about y'all, but he, he did a good, he, God worked through him for me. And I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. And he even tells a few funny jokes. I won't say all, but a few. <laughs> As our deacons prepare to give the occasion, it's just always good to be under a pastor who knows the word of the Lord. I love it that when I was in a dark space and not really knowing God, not really wanting to know him, that he stood flat-footed and he preached from the word. And it was so consistent and I couldn't steer away from it. And so I'm just so thankful, Pastor James. The occasion. This year, our church's theme is answering, God, answering yes to God. Isaiah, the sixth chapter, one through eighth verses. <clears throat> Read, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings, and twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth <clears throat> is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me. For I am undone, because I am a man with unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphim unto him, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here I am, send me. Like the great eagle prophet Isaiah on March 17, 1983, our pastor headed the great commission and vision of God and answered yes. This year marks 41 years since he rendered, <clears throat> since he rendered his yes to the Most High. He continues to have a fervent passion for preaching and teaching the Word of God. Thank you, Pastor James, for taking up the Great Commission. Matthew 28, 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. To God be the glory for the great things he has done in and through our pastor, Thurm James, he said yes. God bless our pastor. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Pastor James, yet again. We now have some reflections that we would like to share with the congregation as we prepare them, please. Direct your attention to our screen. Congratulations and happy 41st. Uh, it's an honor and a privilege that I get to call you my father. 
a father in the ministry because sure enough, you have raised me, you have disciplined me, you have taught me, and you have instructed me how to be a better man. I thank you for your preaching. I thank you for your teaching. I thank you for your, your pastoralship, how you, you are a good shepherd. And I thank you because your words, they have impacted me. They have impacted my marriage. They have great impact on my ministry. They have great impact of me being a father. They have a great impact of just walking this thing called life. And uh, it is your words that rings in my soul and rings in my ear that makes me better, that challenge me because you have taught me how to preach in season and how to preach out of season. You have shown me how to exegete a text. You have shown me how to preach Jesus even when the environment may not have been comfortable, when the subject may not have been easy. You have taught me to stand on God's word. So I thank you more than anything else for your deposit of God's word into my life. And I pray to God that the words that have been taught and preached to me, I'll be able to preach to others and that others may be affected as I have been and still am affected by your walk, your preaching, and your teaching. So once again, happy 41st anniversary. God bless you. Wow, 41 years of preaching. That's impressive. I have at least been around for over 30 years of your preaching. And listening to you preach has taken this no confident, low self-esteem boy and turned him into a confident man. But what's more impressive is over these 30 years, how your life um, preached to me. I got to see you in every area of your life. I uh, saw you sick. I've seen you dealing with loss. I've seen you upset. I've seen you disappointed. But through all of that, you still stuck to the word. You did deviate uh, from the Bible. And um, I am honored and thankful that I get to sit under your preaching and teaching. You are by far my favorite preacher. Um, you are my role model, my mentor, my hero. And I am grateful that you have allowed the Lord to use you all these years. So happy 41st preaching anniversary. And I pray that the Lord give you many more. Bethany, Pastor James. Congratulations, 41 years of preaching God's gospel. My God, 41 years. Where has the time gone? Pastor James, I salute the divinity in you. God used your preaching to be the vehicle to help save my life. And so I am grateful, forever grateful. Pastor James, I pray that you would please enjoy the fruits of what it is that God has given you through your preaching. I pray that you can have joy, hope, peace, all the different other things that you've allowed people to experience through your preaching. Happy 41st preaching anniversary. What an amazing accomplishment. We love you. Continue to enjoy. And that speaks more to me. Um, than anything. And so I'm just thankful to call him father, thankful to call him my mentor. Uh, so happy 41st anniversary. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you for our pastor. We will now be led further in worship with our praise and worship. Why don't you participate with us as we have a little talk with Jesus? Amen.
Now let us Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. We can and he will and he will answer by and when you and then you have a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Church, I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in, and then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It baked my heart in love and wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus, and we can, and he will, and he will, and when you, and then you, singing, makes it right, now let Have a little talk with Jesus makes it right. One more time, one more time. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. And we can tell him all about our And he will And he will Have a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Have a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Thank you, men. We will now have our baby blessings with the families. Please come with the baby. Fathers, please bring your children. Man. Please go there. As the fathers and mothers and babies oh. come to the pulpit, we would ask that all family members connected to these babies please come forward. Grandparents, godparents, cousins, aunties, uncles. Siblings, please come forward and stand around the altar. And they, yeah, they stand. Come.
so there's nothing like church. We're taking all of the photos first <laughs> before we get to the blessing of the babies. Oh my God. Oh. Okay, so can we please, family, stand around maybe in order? as we ask others. Okay. And I think this is about as much order as we're gonna get. That's right. Luke 2, 22 to 23. And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. Amen. 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 It's a wonderful thing to come and dedicate these kids to the Lord. In this public dedication, you're actually making a vow that these children will be raised knowing who their Lord and Savior is. And at the appropriate time, they'll make their own decision. But you have made a decision today to lead them. I read from the prophet, Cahill Cabram poet who wrote these words and a woman held a baby against her bosom and said speak to us of children and he said your children are not your children they are the sons and daughters of life longing for itself they come through you but not from you and though they are with you yet they belong not to you you may give them your love, but not your thoughts, for they have their own thoughts. You may house their bodies, but not their souls, for their souls dwell in houses of tomorrow, which you cannot visit, not even in your dream. You may strive to be like them, but seek not to make them like you. For life if goes back backwards or turns yesterday. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father and our strong God, we thank you for Egypt and for Therm. Thank, thank you for parents and the grandparents, the, the aunts, uncles, the cousins. But we've all shown up to declare we know God and we want them to know the God that we serve. And so, and so I'd cover them, them the top of their head to the soles of their feet. And all, all their days from this day and all the days to come. Keep your angels around. Keep your blood over them. And God, we thank you, thank you Lord. that they will grow to know you, become an instrument in your hand, mm -hmm. to not only give their life, but let others fall in the life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You want to say anything thing to me? Let me. <laughs> I got my two names for him. I call him Slimmy and Chippy. He's a chip off the old block. And I and I'm the block. <laughs> I give give you um James the third. Thank you. 
Straight out of Africa. <laughs> Looking like an African queen. Uh-huh. What do you want to say today? <laughs> She's so cute. So I don't have to say anything. I'm, I'm looking part. I give you, you each give the Lord, Lord a hand each for her. Hey, amen. Amen. This certificate signifies that on the 17th day of March in the year of our Lord, 2024, Sir Michael James III and Egypt Love Purvin were anointed, dedicated, and performed at, at the Beth Baptist Church. Pastor James prayed for the blood of Jesus to cover the gift of God. No weapon formed against Sir or Egypt will ever prosper, and for safety everywhere where they travel. A declaration of peace, prosperity, hope, Happiness and the benefits of God will follow, follow them all the, all the days of lives. The power of Jesus Christ, firm and e- Egypt dream gr- great dreams that, that will come to pass. Every parent, family member, and community member will serve as an instrument of blessing in their lives. May firm and Egypt always remember there is a prayer that covers their lives. Hence, hence now and forever. forever. Amen. 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 We got a whole lot, whole lot more coming. Um, we have um, seven infants in the family. And if you look at my door, door law, eight is on, on the way. <laughs> We could get a, a whole lot more babies to bless. Get a little hand praise. And, uh, one thing I try to impress upon my children, my nieces, my nephew, my great nieces, my great nephews. You know, my grands, that we are from, from Viticoke Coke. Be, being a part of the Levites, we take care of the church. And we don't just go to church, we have to participate in church. And so, all these little babies, in a minute, will be cherubs. So, And be junior ushers, and then they'll be choir members, and they'll just go on up the line. Trustees, deacons, preachers, but they they will be working somewhere in the kingdom of God because that's who we are. We are not spectators; we are participants. Amen. We're waiting on our preacher. I'm here to preach at home today. And so, um, um, Dr. Anthony Moore, Moore should be pretty close and in route. He's five minutes away. Amen. So, to fill that time, since this is my 41st anniversary, I'm going to sing a song. Oh, 
no, I would, I would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't. Yeah, wouldn't. Yeah, wouldn't. Yeah, wouldn't. Yeah, wouldn't. Yeah, wouldn't. <laughs> Ain't my wife so kind? Yeah, we were singing Paul Horton's songs. That's what's one of my favorite singers. I said that that's one of my favorite singers. I didn't say they were one of my favorite songs. <laughs> Listen, I, I believe you need to stay in your lane. You need to figure out what you, what you and, and do what you do do. As, as William Augustus Jones, the great, great preacher, was out to run us to the Father's house. One of the greatest preachers that lived. He said, some preachers have a decided advantage. Sometime when their sermon is flat, they, they can rescue it. But with, with a spatire, yeah, with a solo at the, the end. And Bill Jones said, I'm not of that lineage. If my sermon go flat, I'm gonna just have to rim it all in and wait till next time. But, uh, but um, Dr. Moore is going to come. We won't have our men now. And uh, Dr. Moore will come, we'll put him up. Amen. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There's a precious fountain free.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, open your mouth and praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, my Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Come on, anybody know God's been good? We didn't been here for an hour. You ain't opened your mouth. You, you had nothing the whole time. Now, if I, if I was at a baseball ball game, you were something. If, if I was at a Ravens game, you were something. But I come from the soul, Lord of Lord, the King's Kings. I got an open mouth and so time to say to God, thank you for being the door opener. Thank you for being a way maker. Thank you for being broke when I was hard with water. When I was thanking God, I just want to say hey, thank you. Anybody come come God some praise on this one? I, I, I know y'all. Uh, I know we do. We, we're waiting for preaching. Since the preacher's here, how about we give God a praise all the way as we expect the word? Come on, somebody got, if you need a word, you got to give God some worship. God don't need a word. He already needs his worship. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Everybody, everybody, hold it. I know, no, I, y'all, y'all like, like TJ Lyle says, it's mine. When I come, come, I have the expectation. I have the expectation. Come on, just say, praise him. Praise him. Come on, all over the building. Praise him. My, my Lord, praise him. And you know his name? Jesus. My Jesus. Come on, he's worthy. He's worthy to be. Come on, take a room time. Oh, why don't you praise? Anybody know he's worthy? Praise him. Oh, praise him. My Lord, praise his name is my blessed. He's worthy thee to be. Come on from the rock. From the rock. Come on, come on, sing. We are bad this up. Until the go going down. Until the going down of the sea. He's worthy. Come on, he's worthy. Why don't you? Come on, put, put those hands together. That's all we come to do. Oh, my Lord. His name is my blessing. He, he's worthy. Come on, come. from the rising of the sun. Until, until the going down of the dark. She's is worthy. Come on, hey, Jesus is worthy. He worthy to you. Why don't you just Oh Come on Yeah His name is What's his name What's his name There is baby The lily of the valley the, the bright morning star. There, there is baby. He's my, my healer. My deliverer. Jesus.
Jesus is his name. Bless the Savior. Bless it, Savior. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Come on, wrap your hands like it goes in between it. If you expect God to give you the word you need, open your mouth and give the Lord some praise as we welcome the preacher of the hour, the Reverend Dr. Anthony Moore. God bless, bless you. The Bible was in your hands. You all have waited long enough. Let's go right to the Word of God, if you will. I'm honored today to be here to celebrate with my brother, my friend, in the person of Pastor Thurm James for 41 years of preaching. Would y'all help me celebrate a little? I'm just I'm grateful. Hallelujah. Grateful for his lovely wife, who is alongside of him, my sister, and um, I'll fight you all for both of them. <laughs> Brother, I'm grateful for my wife with me. She's on her way, and we um, we caught a plane from Fort Washington to get here, and um, they let me land the helicopter right here on y'all site. <laughs> I wouldn't have done it, done it any, any, any other way. My friend and my brother, Thurm James. I want to say a word about the executive pastor. She's recuperating. I'm believing God to heal her body. Amen. And um, we'll return her back full force. Amen. Amen. My nephew, Few, who was lead, leading up worship, I almost thought I was, was with my else's this church. Yeah, okay. He, he holds to be here. I'm going to ask y'all to get your Bibles and look at Ezekiel 37, if you will. Ezekiel 37. And I want to be reading you, you're hearing verses 1 through 4. Verses 1 through 4. Um, to some who have been in church for a while, this might be a familiar passage of Scripture. Um, but for those who haven't, it may not be, but we'll, we'll walk through it. Verse 1 says this, it says, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. Caused to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can, can these bones live? And, and I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones 
and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the, the word of the Lord. I, I want to I preach for a few moments, if you, if you don't mind, from the subject. I want to preach, um, can these bones live? Would you do me a favor before you sit down? Just look at somebody on your row, look at them and say, them, can these, these bones live? <laughs> Hallelujah. You might be sick. If I could get you to keep your Bibles open for a moment, it is my responsibility to walk us through the word of God. Doesn't make sense for the preacher to, to see, to read the text, but then not say something about the text. Ezekiel's visions are probably the most majestic and marvelous theophany described on the pages of Holy Scripture. We get to see the weight and the brilliance and, and the significance of God's person at, at the curtain raising of these visions. It's here in our text where Ezekiel, the parapetic Preacher sermonizes is among skeletons and calls on winds to shout, Amen. For many would consider Ezekiel as a strange and peculiar preacher simply because of his bizarre behavior and strange visions. I want to suggest to you that Ezekiel was before his time. He was always having and sharing bring these out of world visions. Ezekiel, whose name means strengthened by God, or God is my strength. Happened to him, to him in the son of a priest by, by the name of Buzzy, who was the, the priest of J Jerusalem. I want to suggest to you, before I go any further, that God has a way of giving us strength even before we recognize we need, need it. He has a way of preparing our weaknesses even before the acknowledgement we have of a weakness is even front and center in our lives. So God gives them strength through Ezekiel. Ezekiel, TGJ, was a protege and a temporary of Jeremiah. His ministry happened at a time of national derision. At a time of national mockery of a people. Happened at a time of personal depression. I think y'all would agree that when, whenever there is dissolution of institutions that have been instruments in shaping and forging who we are as a person, as a people, it hurts. I'll do it again again. Whenever we have institutions that dissolve has been in a major help to, to us as individuals, as a people, when we, we see those institutions dissolve, it hurts us. And this, my brothers and sisters, is how Ezekiel is feeling about the lost, the temple, Jerusalem. The temple for Ezekiel had come um, to be, become the thing that he loved and he had known for all of his formative years. 
The temple that he had come to adore in Jerusalem at the revival of Josiah, who, who eradicated idolatry and did what was right in the sight of God, is no longer in place. The, the temple that was a training ground for him, for the priesthood like his, with his father, is no longer there. The temple was decimated by the rise of the Neo-Babylonian Empire. So the temple pole is on. And Ezekiel is having a problem. Yeah. Nebuchadnezzar was the new superpower that was taking over the world. Yeah. It was Nebuchadnezzar who was dominating the landscape of the ancient Near East. And Nebuchadnezzar invaded Jerusalem and Judah. The Bible tells us took some of Jerusalem uh, and Judah's as prized youth. Yeah. Some of which you are most familiar with, like Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach and that bad Negro named Manigo. Yo, he, he just takes some, some to me. He just takes some of the promising youth, but, but he also took some of the preeminent leaders like Ezekiel. Ezekiel, along with others, are carried away to a place called... Babylon. E Ezekiel was a, a trophy, never ever conquest. conquest. Ah, that's again. E Ezekiel. Strange at how the world places more value on the man and woman of God than the people of God whom they serve. Never conquest. Guarded is Ezekiel as a prize to be displayed. Y'all ain't hear me. I, I, I mean, y'all, it's strange to me that we can have God's manservant amongst us and not pay him any attention or give any value to him, but the world sees him and knows he's worth more as a prize possession. At, at the time of captivity, Ezekiel was working and he was being trained as a priest. It wasn't until during the captivity that God called Ezekiel to be a pit. I'll do it again and I'll come back at you. I said it was at the, at the time of captivity that Ezekiel was training to be a priest. It wasn't until during the captivity that God called Ezekiel to be a prophet. Now, I imagine that Ezekiel enjoyed being a priest because all he had to do was serve right on the table. Did the deal with the people and all of their needs and their existence to following commands of God? Ezekiel got the opportunity, you all, to turn his face towards the Lord. But now the prophet Ezekiel has to turn his face towards the people and de declare, thus saith the Lord. So Ezekiel got compensated to serve the tables. But now God turns Ezekiel's comfort upside down. Now the priest becomes the prophet. It's important to also know not that Ezekiel's pri priestly ministry was sh short lived. And seemed to end up play. At the unwise hand of a political maneuver of Jehoiakim and the sovereign mighty power of God. God places the Jewish nation in, in Babylonian activity again. Because their idolatry and disobedience. It was at this point that the wife of Ezekiel dies. And God forbids him to grieve for her publicly. Y'all ain't all into me. Ezekiel loses most dear earthly companion ever known. And he's not able to display publicly any emotions for his wife who is no longer there. I want to suggest to you all today that God places peculiar preachers in peculiar circumstances. In order that, that his will might be achieved in earth. God, not only does God use peculiar preachers 
in peculiar circumstances. But if I understand at all this preaching and pastoral assignment in which you, Pastor James, and I are part of, the circumstances of Ezekiel all exposes the reality that God will sometimes put us in situations that we didn't necessarily ask for being subject to a force over which we have little power to overcome. He then drops us down in a, in a culture we, we can't change. We did, didn't act for it. We don't like it. You don't want to be in it. And yet we have decided to do it because that's God's will for our lives. Now I need y'all to see this y'all. I, I need y'all to see this because this is Ezekiel. He's trying to work through some stuff. But the man has some problems. He got some problems. He got some, some problems. I mean, y'all are doing the same he, he hasn't been trained for. And in addition to him being in an assignment he hasn't been trained for, his wife is no longer by his side. And God said, come here. I need you to handle something. I need you to be an example for my people. Uh, God places peculiar preachers in peculiar circumstances in order that we might be achieve the will that God has for the earth and for our lives. Now listen, y'all, y'all, now this God you use peculiar preachers in, in peculiar circumstances. But if, but if I understand it all, it's preaching, pattern engagement. Y'all, I'm here to tell y'all that God will place us in positions with people that really don't like us. And they don't even listen to us. God, God, God says they, um, um, with a national crisis, with personal depression, God shows up with a vision of himself. He calls Ezekiel to be, be the white man. And God warned him if he did not fully warn the punishment for following him that he himself will be held accountable for the blood of those who died in the in their hands. Park your kiff. And I need to, need to tell somebody that God reserves the right to break into our own trouble with visions of himself. He has a way with timing. Where his appearances coincide with our greatest need. Yeah. Ezekiel, as well as us, need to be to be reminded that God does not wait trouble. There, there is purpose in tr- trouble. And sometimes on the street of difficulty, God will schedule an appointment where he can meet us face to face to get us to carry out his assignment. And he does it as if trouble. I, 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 I tell somebody who's carrying some this morning, who's enduring some pain, somebody who has sleepless nights, that whatever you're carrying, whatever disappointments you are having to face, whatever pain you're having to endure, I need you to know God does not waste his trouble. I don't, I don't know what I'm talking to, but, but I got sense that's to know that there, there are those sitting in the news that's the day and you're going through some stuff. I got news here. I said that God does not waste trouble. God has a purpose for his trouble. Oh, there, there, there's purpose in our trouble. Some, sometimes, sometimes, judge, sometimes I, I, just, I just tell somebody who's, who's in some way, God wants to use you in a usual way. Hey, listen, listen, can I can I drop this on y'all? That's seven of y'all. I'll ask again. Can I drop this on y'all? Yeah. Listen, y'all, y'all, whatever you're going on, you you not have to face it by yourself. Which which y'all help reach. You you never have to carry a sickness alone. You have never carried a failure of some relationship alone. You have never had to stand at the grave of a loved one by yourself. God has yes. always been there yes. in the greatest time of crisis, revealing Himself to you. 
Okay, can I get you out of verse one? Come on, first lady, watch verse one. Verse one, the hand of the Lord yes, was upon me yes, and carried me up in the spirit of the, of the Lord. Yes. Set me down in the, in the midst of the valley, which was all of bones. Y'all, y'all, listen, listen, may, may I drop this on y'all? Y'all, we, we give too much credit to whose mouth is against, against us. Not enough, enough credit or credence to, to whose hand upon us. Yes, the, the, the Bible's the hand of the Lord. The hand. I'm going to preach. Well, y'all help me or not. Y'all, I got something in me. I came all this way to help my brother out. I'm going to preach, y'all. I want you to know the Bible says the hand of, of the Lord yes. upon me. me. Am, I, am I in the way, y'all? The hand of the Lord was upon me. We feel like you are outside of the will of God. Because trouble has crossed the domain of your, of your, own, of your own circumstances. I need you to know that it is the will of God. And God plans to visit you to times or places where I are. And sometimes it's your darkest season. I've come to announce today that since you're going through some stuff, God has not left you alone. He's going to have his hand upon you. And he will show up in your darkest season. He carried it. Watch the text. It says, carried me out. Carried me out in spirit of the Lord. Now notice y'all the text. The text says in verse 1 that after his hand was upon me, he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. The first goes on to say, he, he sat down. In, in the midst of the valley. <laughs> Mama, that's what says. It says, he set me down. In, in the midst of the valley. The Lord carried me up. And then he set me down. He, uh, he, um, he, he lifted me up. But then he set me down. This is not just geographical. But this is also spiritual. God lifts us up to sometimes set us down. Oh God, he, he lifts us up sometimes to, to set us down. Ooh, ooh, man, he, he, he lifts us, us up to sometimes, yo, set us down. Wow, wow. Notice, if you will, where he set Ezekiel. He sets him down in the midst of the valley leaves him in the valley God set him down in the middle of the valley yeah. now, now let me just tell y'all up front that this right here is problematic for me theologically yeah. Be I have always associated the valley with that we go through, I've always associated it with the devil. With darkness. Yeah, yeah. Yo, he sets me down in, in the valley. In a valley. He sets me down in a valley. I, I vow that I'm, I'm supposed to go through. Not that which I'm supposed to set down in. I mean, y'all, I mean, it was David, wasn't it? Who said, say, um, uh, uh, yeah, I walk, walk through the valley. So I've always seen the valley Satan. And I'm supposed to sit down there. I'm supposed to be able to walk through it. The valley for me has always indicated struggle. Indicated stress. It indicates to me suffering. I have always so so seen the valley with darkness and that which is demonic. But Ezekiel is not equating the valley with darkness or demonic. But instead he said to us, the hand of the Lord was upon me. me carried me out spirit of, of the Lord. And sent me down in, in the midst of the, the valley. The same God 
whose hand is upon me is the same God who put me in the valley. Oh, all right. Oof, man. Okay. Not only am I in a valley, but I'm in a, in a valley, dry bones. Now, this isn't the devil who has me here. This valley experience is not demonic. But this valley experience was divine. Yeah, yeah. Not, not, not only my valley, but I'm in a valley of dry bones. But the devil did this to me. This valley experience is not demonic. It's divine. Here's why. Because there are times when God will come in and lift us up and then set us down to the work. Yeah. I know y'all were going to respond like that. I, but I know I'm right because on one occasion when Jesus had taken Peter, James, and John with him on the Mount of Transfiguration where Jesus was transfixed before their very eyes and his clothes became radiant intensely white as no earth could, could bleach him. And the Bible says Moses and Elijah appeared started having this conversation with Jesus until Peter tells Jesus, it's just good for us to be here. Let's just build us three tabernacles and just stay up here on the mountain. And Jesus tells them that they can't stay there. Why? Because we have, we have work to do in the valley. I'm, I'm trying to get to see that, that God lifts us up in order to set us down in the valley to do his work. So it never God takes you up in the mountain. It's only to get you to a place where you can get the strength you need to go, go down in the, in the valley to the work. Okay. Now, now, now let me, y'all, in order to do, do the work, we go going to need spirit. Push the rewind button, y'all. If I was at home, that's how I would do it at home. Y'all, 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 listen. I said, in order for us to do the work, we, we go need spirit. Now, God sometimes takes us up so he can set us down. Hmm. He lets Ezekiel down in a strange place. He lets him down in a place that, that full of, of dry bones. And then calls him, according to verse 2, to pass by them. And he says, and behold, there were many, 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 many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. Bible, y'all, y'all? Okay, go to verse 3. Go to 3. Almost fish. Here it is. Watch verse 3. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? Ah. <sighs> Son, can these bones live? When, when money is spent on incarceration and rehabilitation and not education, son, can the bones live? When, when more money is sent to Ukraine and Israel who are literally killing the Palestinians I, I don't know so man can these bones live with, 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 with need all around us England burning Son of man, can these bones live? Ezekiel, in essence, says, God, this is your vow. Yeah. These are your bones. God, you know that. Y'all hear me? Ezekiel said, God, God, these are your bones. These are your, your, this is your valley. Yeah. Only you know. Now, he, he teaches us, us that there are some things I don't have to, to figure out that there are something I don't have, have the ability to wrestle with but God already knows 
So listen, y'all, listen, listen. May I suggest to us that we got to stop taking responsibility for stuff that's, that's not ours. I'm trying to figure out some, some things. God's already worked it out. God, God, God said, yes, I, I do know. But here's what I need you to do. Prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye bones, hear the word of the Lord. Here's what he says. I want you to open your mouth and prophesy to the dry bones. Missed it. He wants you to open, open you and declare, hear the word of the Lord. I want you to open your mouth and declare over your own home, over your own child, over your own marriage, over your own committee, over your, your own finances. Hear the word of the Lord. Here's why. Because you have power to bind and lose some things in your own life. You have the power to lay hands on your own self. You have the power to say to yourself, I shall, shall live and not, not die. You have the, the power to put your hands on your own body and, and say, I shall build. Y'all hear me what I'm saying? You have to open your own mouth. I said, open your own mouth and declare, hear the word of the Lord. I am healed. I am the best. I am the head. I shall be. You got to open your mouth and declare yourself. Okay, all right. So, 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 so watch, watch what God does. I'm almost through. Y'all sit down. One more, one more thing. I'm finished. I know y'all waiting for me. I'm almost through. I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm almost, almost I'm, I'm, I'm right here. Yo, yo, watch what God does. Yo, yo, watch what does. Watch, watch, watch what he does in verse 4. In, in verse 4. Verse, verse 4. He, he, he tells Ezekiel to prophesy to the dry bones. Are y'all with me? Come on, y'all. Y'all watch the text, y'all. He says in verse 4, he tells Ezekiel to prophesy to, to the bones. But in verse 5, watch what God does. God does what he told Ezekiel to do. Come on, y'all. He says, thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord under these, these bones. Behold, I'll cause breath to enter in you, and you shall live. Come on, y'all. Verse 6. And I will lay sin news upon you. And I will bring up flesh upon you. And I'll cover you with skin. And then breath in you. And you shall live. And you'll know that I am the Lord. I wish y'all could see what I see. I wish you could see what I see. Now, now wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. God, God, God. I, I thought. You told Ezekiel yes, the pro prophets to the bones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before Ezekiel could but do what God commanded him to do, uh -huh. God spoke to the bones. Yeah. Why are you doing what you told the prophet to do? Yeah. Here, here's why, y'all. So, so when Ezekiel prophesies to the, the bones, they we will already be pre prepared. Yeah. To do what God spoke to them needs to be done. In other words, y'all, in other words, all I'm trying to get y'all to see is that God will prepare them for the shift that's about to have happen. Get them ready to move. Ezekiel prophesied. So the Lord told me, y'all, that he's, he's preparing a shift to take place in your life, not because of you. But because he's already spoken to the sister in your life. He, he has already spoken the problems in your life. So that when you speak to your circumstances, the shift will already have taken place. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? 
God told me that I will show you it. Because I have spoken to, to your situation. I will make a way for you. Because I have spoken to your situation. All I need you to do is open your mouth. Put your hands on yourself. And say I will live. I shall not die. I will be healed. Fuck you. Throw away on me. I just came by to tell you. You shall live. Tell yourself. I will live. I shall not die. Can I tell y'all one more thing? I, I know y'all don't believe it's going to happen. I got to take y'all to verse 7. Bo says that when, when his zeal did it what God told, told him to do after God, God had already spoken to the situation. The Bible says there was a noise. Y'all ain't helping me. There was a noise. And after the noise, Bible says there's a shaking. Y'all ain't hear me. A noise and a shaking. Bones started rattling. And then the Bible says they all came together. Y'all ain't listening to me. I ain't got time to give it all to you. But the bones came together. I don't know what I'm walking to. I dare you. Open your, your mouth. Make a noise. Go to skin and watch your bones come together. Throw your head back and shout glory. glory in the room I don't know what you need my brother my sister but there's glory in the room the, the port opened so, so I advise you to, you to open your mouth and make, make your declaration known unto God cause the Ruha breath of God is in the room I don't know if you need to be set free delivered but there's glory in the room come on we're standing all over the sanctuary We're standing off the sanctuary. My friends, my brothers, and my sisters, I don't know what you are seeing that's dead in your life. But the preacher told you that if you prophesy to it, that dead situation is to come to life. Some of you might have just come in here just out of this what you do. But anytime you walk into a church, you should have a visitation of the of the of God. And a reminder that, that the breath of God is the wind of God is blowing in your way. But in order to have the wind blowing in your direction, you gotta have the right connection. 